it is time to do our first stop and jot for Module 8. Don't forget to grab your Module 8 handout. We covered a lot of important information in this vocabulary overview, and the purpose was not to jargogle you, or more simply stated to confuse you, or in a more lighthearted way to bamboozle you. Instead, we wanted to whet your appetite and get you ready to dig deeper into this exciting topic. We started by defining vocabulary. We learned about three basic meanings for the word, but the big idea is that vocabulary is all about words and meaning. It refers to the words one knows and can use in their speaking, listening, reading, and writing. This led us into a discussion about the importance of vocabulary and the connection between vocabulary and comprehension. Vocabulary is about exploring relationships between words, while comprehension is constructing meaning from text. The struggle for some of our readers is that they do not have a cognitive backpack full of strategies to help them determine the meaning of words they encounter. When students are unable to figure out the word meaning, that impacts their ability to construct an understanding of a text. This illustrates the reciprocal relationship between vocabulary and comprehension. So the big idea is that if students do not understand what a word means, then it is difficult to construct an understanding of what was read. This was demonstrated in our reading of, there was an old woman who swallowed a fly and thanks for nothing. We also talked about the critical need to enhance vocabulary growth among our students, the fact that students learn about 3,000 words each year, and that by the end of high school, they could know more than 40,000 words. We can help students grow their vocabulary through both direct and indirect instruction. Direct instruction is where you provide explicit instruction of and practice with vocabulary words in context, as well as through word study an indirect instruction which occurs when students hear and see those words in different contexts, such as through conversations, read aloud experiences, and independent reading. There are not enough instructional minutes in the day to teach all the words students need to know, so incidental exposures at school and at home can occur through reading a wide variety of texts. As you plan those opportunities for direct and indirect instruction, you need to also keep in mind the five elements of effective vocabulary instruction. The first element is to connect to background knowledge. There's a virtual consensus that background knowledge is essential for reading comprehension. We must always try to connect a new word to something they know. Effective instruction also provides multiple exposures to words. Children must have many opportunities to encounter the new word with research showing seven to be a good solid number to work from. Active involvement is the third element and underscores the need to provide children with opportunities to become actively involved in using a new word and concept in context. They need to be pushed to play with the word. When working with words, it is important that we focus on rich meanings. We do this when we expand our exploration of the meaning of the word beyond a definition to include learning about synonyms, antonyms, parts of speech, classifications, comparisons, real life examples, graphic versions, etc. We need to really expose them to the word. The last effective element we talked about was the importance of wide reading. We must provide lots of opportunities throughout the school day for kids to read, and we must encourage this wide reading to extend into the home. This wide reading should include reading a variety of texts for general exposure to words, and also reading of a single topic to deepen their understanding of a word. Remember, the more minutes students spend reading correlates to a higher percentile rank for reading achievement, because the more words you know, the better you can understand the reading. A big idea is that we consider these elements of effective vocabulary instruction as we plan for direct and indirect instruction. In order to do that, we also have to understand how children's vocabulary processes grow based on the complexity of word knowledge what some refer to as really knowing the word, owning the word. We learned about five important aspects that helps build an understanding of implicit and explicit word knowledge. Incrementality, which signifies word learning occurs over time and in bits and pieces. It doesn't happen all at once as our degrees of knowing a word grows over time. Polysemy, meaning that words often have multiple meanings. And these meanings are not static, but shift according to context. 
remember the bat example from module two, where the reader conjured up three definitions for bat, but discarded two of them in light of the context in which it was being used. Multidimensionality, meaning that words have multiple forms and features and can include literal and figurative meanings. For example, dog as a noun, meaning an animal, but dog tired as an adjective, meaning worn out. Interrelatedness, which relates to the notion that knowing a word means knowing how the word is linked to other words. Knowing the word cat eventually connects to tiger, which could connect to pets and wild animals, etc. And heterogeneity, which means knowing what a word means based on the type of word that is talked about, its function and structure. Now, the last big idea I want you to hold on to as it is critical in the early grades. As we expose students to words and are building their word knowledge, we are making them aware of words overall, which helps to increase their word consciousness. Students who are word conscious have a keen awareness of words and a keen interest in words. The importance of word consciousness is that once they become interested in words, they begin to notice them all around and consequently become more motivated to understand them. Young children just love a new word. When they get excited about a new word you've introduced, they enjoy using it, maybe in all the wrong ways and all the wrong times, but it's so exciting because over time, they get it, and that is phenomenal. This wraps up our stop and jot. How can the big ideas we have covered relate to your classroom instruction?